Our guest in this segment is attorney at law, Stephen Skinner. Good morning, Stephen. How are you? Good morning. Glad to be here. How are you all? Excellent. Thank you. Have you ever been asked if you play in the NBA? I have never. And I think the tallest person I ever played against was probably five uh, two since I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> since I stopped playing relatively early, at least competitively. That's a great one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was a big 5-2 for third grade. You know, that kid had the lane. You know, I have come I have sort of come full circle to embrace basketball later in life and I really enjoy watching it now. Mm -hmm. Um yesterday I was driving through Martinsburg and I saw a truck coming at me with flags waving behind and I thought, "Oh, it's it's somebody with a grievance with their flags and uh i was surprised to see that they were la lakers flags oh. which uh was was something new and different on the the typical flags we'd see flying behind trucks so i've been i'm watching the lakers nuggets games right now and i'm, uh, I'm a nuggets fan I I am cheering for the Nuggets like crazy too. There's nothing more joyous than than staying up late and watching LeBron lose and watching his face at the end. <laughs> yeah, I had a. I didn't make it all the way last night. Though. In the '80s, I was a huge Lakers fan. Mm -hmm. That team was just fun to watch with Magic Johnson, James hey, Worthy. Oh yeah, Michael Byron Cooper. Scott, Coop. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, they were so much fun to watch. Showtime, and then I watched that Showtime series when it was on. Oddly enough, HBO. That was actually pretty good. I was I, I was kind of bummed that they stopped that. I was not, I was a Celtic fan in the eighties. <laughs> Very disappointed they stopped that. Yeah, that was good stuff. Yeah, Stephen, let's talk uh, about some of the work that you've done uh, in the last couple of years regarding PFAS chemicals and how we now seem to have some new regulations regarding these forever chemicals. Can you tell us the latest on this development? Yeah, well, let me let me just recap what I've been doing. You know, the Air National Guard used a product, a foam, um, to drill for putting out fires at the Martinsburg Airport. Um, and contained in that foam are these chemicals, these PFAS chemicals. And they were, uh, it turns out, extremely hazardous uh to the our our brave firefighters at the airport who were exposed to it on a weekly basis for a very long time and the uh pollution uh the leftover foam was then generally disposed of uh by allowing it to go into the ground and therefore into the groundwater which is very near one of the wells that is the intake for the municipal water system for Martinsburg. And so it was a delivery system for the people drinking uh, Martinsburg city water to get the different PFAS chemicals, basically a, a perfect storm of really bad delivery of these chemicals. The chemicals um, are, have been shown to and correlate with increased uh, risks for testicular cancer, kidney cancer, thyroid cancer, thyroid disease, um, the uh, inability to get pregnant, um, cholesterol issues. And um, I have been representing hundreds of people in Berkeley County for the last several years in a, a lawsuit seeking to hold the manufacturers of the chemicals responsible. And the reason why we're doing that is because they knew all this time about the studies that linked these chemicals to the human health harms. And um, it turns out these chemicals are ubiquitous. They are everywhere, including in food containers. Um, and all of us have developed in our lifetimes um, some PFAS in our bodies. It bioaccumulates, meaning it, it, it stays in your body, and it takes a very, very long time to break down. So if we all did a blood test, we're likely to show it. Some of us have a lot more of it than others, and we don't know actually know where 
everyone's sources, but for a lot of folks in Martinsburg, we do know the source. It was it was their drinking water. Um, so I represent and I continue to represent those people. And one of the things that's just happened is the Biden administration um, has been very clear about it, <clears throat> about wanting to make sure that we have um, dealt with the PFAS problem nationally and um, has set a clear federal drinking water standard for the amount of PFAS that can be found in your drinking water. That's sort of the number one thing that they've done, and that's been a long time coming. We have many, many sites across the country. A lot of them are military sites or airport sites where um, or factories that are using PFAS in their manufacturing process that have created toxic levels of, of PFAS um, in, in, nearby. And <clears throat> the, the second thing that the Biden administration did, and they've done it actually since I agreed to come on um, the show, is they've, they're designating um, PFAS as a chemical that's eligible for Superfund cleanup. So the federal government's going to come in and help a lot of places clean up. You've, you've heard the term Superfund site. They will help with the most um, uh, significant um, places of P toxic PFAX pollution across the country. Um, I think there are, I'm doing this off the top of my head, maybe 108 Superfund sites that have already been identified. Um, Martinsburg is not, which is a good thing for us, that it's not that severely contaminated. Um, but there are a lot of sites relatively nearby, um, including in the Washington area and in Maryland, Pennsylvania, that are Superfund sites. So we're, it, it, it redesignates PFAS and uh, creates a lot more obligation. And what we're looking for ultimately here is for um, 3M, who is the primary manufacturer, to uh, be responsible for, for what they were doing all these years. Um, and the other thing that's happening is the, the phase out of PFAS and the use of, of uh, in the products that we all have and touch every day. You know, I've been told that when you get a credit card receipt <clears throat> and the machine prints it out, um, the coating actually has a lot of PFAS in it, and it will, it will absorb directly into your skin. So it is in, you know, millions of applications all over the world, and it's it's poisoning us slowly. So pretty serious thing, and I'm, I'm glad to see that we're um, uh, taking a look at it, and that it's going to be regulated properly. Stephen, is uh, is is PFAS effectively going to be the equivalent of what we learned about asbestos, and then the ill effects and lawsuits that followed once we really learned about the effects of asbestos? Is it on that level? Um, I think it is, although it does, you know, it's obviously different effect, and the the health effects are uh, are 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 different in that they're not apparent immediately. And I want to tell um, firefighters that they should make sure that they get tested for their PFAS levels. Um, even two years ago, um, you really couldn't get a PFAS test, and now you can get them almost anywhere. The other one of the other things the Biden administration is doing is they're um, creating a program and funding to help um, firefighters get tested for PFAS across the country. Um, yeah, I think it, it, is it asbestos too? I don't know. Um, and because we all have it, it's it's this it's a thorny problem. The the litigation that I'm involved in. Um, is basically related just to the firefighter phone. And it's um, it's not related to, I mean, we have PFAS was in our cookware and uh, hopefully we're no longer, you no longer have the, the, the PFAS in your cookware, but um, it is everywhere and we all have it. And I don't know that we could, we could solve that problem um, with lawsuits, we're going to have to make sure that we just end the practice of using it in places where humans can come into contact with it 
uh, in an unsafe way. I think there was non-stick cookware, if I remember correctly there. Matt Miller? I mean, I don't want my eggs to stick. You right. know? <laughs> is it worth dying that's of right. cancer? Yeah. That's, it, it, Stephen, is there like a list of these particular chemicals? I mean, do we even know how many chemicals kind of fit in, into PFAS, or are we discovering more and more as we go certain chemicals that maybe we didn't consider but now are considered? You know, there, there's a very specific list of chemicals. Um, PFAS is just a broad name for different types of chemicals. Um, but I, I think that there are a couple of, right now, it's, it's a pretty hot topic. And I just met some folks um, who are, it's a nonprofit out of D.C. called the Environmental Working Group. And they're doing some um, pretty serious work on PFAS. And they've got... Um, all sorts of information, uh, including an interactive map um, that, and you can go find this group at ewg.org. You can go to an interactive map that shows you where the contaminations are, and will, if you zero in on it, you're you are unfortunately you're going to find uh, the city of Martinsburg. Um, they're also going to list the chemicals and. You know, we're we don't we don't know all of the health effects of the chemicals, and because the company was not um, uh, letting us know that about the hazards, um, the the studies that should have been done through the years um, haven't been done. So those are all going on right now, and there are a, um, a lot of studies that are showing the linkages. But you wouldn't the, – these, these chemicals are all synthetic. They're all derived, and primarily because they're so effective at the purpose of what they do, which is um, making it sort of very slippery um, or waterproof is, is one thing that you can use for it. So, But I do encourage people to go to ewg.org and take a look at the information they have. And of course, now if you look, you can look at the um, uh, at the WhiteHouse.gov for their information on what the EPA has done and what it's going to do about it. They have a, a roadmap, and they've been working on PFAS for a long time about um, how they're going to how they're going to deal with it. So, are these chemicals still being used, or are we just now dealing with the after effects that they had been used, but they're no longer being used? They are being used, <laughs> so <laughs> you're you're. It's going to take a long time for us to stop using the chemicals. I mean, you, you believe it or not, you might be getting takeout food in a container that is coated with PFAS. Um, you know, if you're ordering it, there's no, there's not a ban on it the way there should be. Um, and it's used in so many different things. Um, it's it's almost hard to describe the the breadth of their uses. Are these mainly um, associated with plastics, Stephen? Um, I, I I can't answer that question. I think it's far more than that. So, to go back to the food container, you might have a paper food container that has a coating on it and the coating makes it slippery and that coating might have the PFAS in it. So it's not just, it's not just plastic or the, the cookware, you know, your Teflon type cookware is manufactured with it to make it slippery. So, so the, um, it's, it's far more than plastic. So they used to talk about how bad styrofoam was for us and, and they built a worse mousetrap. It seems like. Hey. Well, the other thing, you know, your clothing may have, if you have any waterproof clothing or something to spray for your shoes that make them waterproof, um, that all has PFAS in them. So we got we have to work on the big problem. So right? we just we right just now, need to. I'm I'm working on I'm working on a small tiny piece of the problem with people we know who received uh, huge quantities of the chemical. Um, so we're during during. Our, our lifetimes and our grandchildren's lifetimes, we're going to be figuring out how to how to keep this out of our bodies. 
So with them knowing about this, is there any chance that this could rise to some sort of criminal liability for, for a company like 3M? Well, <laughs> let me answer that in a, in a, in a way that takes us back. Um, how many people, um, how, how many executives from uh, opioid companies uh, and the distributors have gone to jail as a result of the opioid crisis and what happened uh, over the last, you know, 30 years. Uh, I'm going with none. Zero. I, you, I, I think you could go with none, but it's actually, I think, two. And those, those guys were involved in some other shady things. So, so, so darn no. close to none. <laughs> Hey, I mean, so how many how many people have died from opioids? I mean, and, and continue. We've got it, you know, ravaging around us all the time. And the people who started this glass crisis at Purdue Pharma, you know, that family, they're billionaires. Of course so, they are. So I don't I don't know. I can't say that, but um, so, I certainly hope that that a U.S. attorney somewhere decides to look into this. So you are working on the, the problem with firefighters and stuff. Have they started using a diff, different chemicals or a different way of making the foam for firefighters, or are they still using the PFAS foam? So I can't answer that question because there are stockpiled quantities of, of the PFAS. Um, and if I can talk about the Martinsburg um, problem specifically, um, there are the PFAS that goes into the, the ground and therefore into the water and into Martinsburg, um, that was detected and um, the federal government funded an upgrade for the Martinsburg uh, city water systems so that the PFAS is filtered out. So I'm not gonna tell you any water is safe to drink um, in this country, but the uh, the level of PFAS in Martinsburg water is um, uh, very low. Now I haven't I have not matched up the new drinking water standard to to what Martinsburg has, but I, I will tell you that Martinsburg received millions of dollars to or the the water company received millions of dollars to fix the filtration system. Um, that's, a, that's just a oh. part of an answer. Isn't it true that they really have no idea how many particles per million of PFAS are dangerous? I mean, that it's all I sort of a guess. I think that's a that's a good that's a a statement that's true. I, I'm not sure whether we should have any PFAS in our system. Um, and I'm almost you know I I, I had a, I had in the uh, early 2000s I personally had. Uh, my mercury mercury test and I had extremely high levels of mercury and it turns out I have been eating too much fish um, and there's a there can be a lot of mercury in um, certain kinds of fish because like the PFAS it bioaccumulates and then the in the smaller fish and then the bigger fish um, may eat them and um, and and um, so uh, I I don't think that we should probably have lead or mercury in our bodies. Our bodies are pretty amazing and can deal with a lot of it. Turns out that PFAS is one of these things that our bodies don't do a really great job of of dealing with. And for some people, you know, it's leading to pretty serious health concerns. Uh, Stephen Delegate Espinosa on our Facebook uh, comment section. Uh, mentioned his uh, sponsorship and work on House Bill 2722 that limits the use of PFAS uh, firefighting foam. Are you familiar with that legislation? Yeah, and I'd, I'd certainly thank him and I thank Senator Rucker for their work on trying to limit PFAS in West Virginia. We need, we need this kind of state-level awareness of it um, uh, in order to, to combat the problem here. Is that does that legislation go far enough to uh, protect firefighters? Did it bite off a big enough chunk? Uh, um, well, I, I don't I don't know the answer to that. 
and I don't, I don't, I. That is some power right there. <laughs> Just cut that line off. I'm not sure who didn't like that question. Cut that, cut that call off right there, and it's tracks there at uh, 829. Uh, and maybe we can reestablish that connection with Stephen. I'm not sure if, if uh, there's not a whole lot of time left in this segment or not. But uh, when you do segments like that, it always makes you sit back and go, yeah, I don't want to drink any more water. I don't want any more fish. I don't want to wear any more clothes. You know? I had, I had take out. I had kidney stones about 25 years ago, and the doctor said it's from all the minerals in the water mm -hmm. in this area, all the lime and the minerals and everything. He just said, don't drink the water. So I've been drinking bottled water since, which, of course, is covered in PFAS. <laughs> <laughs> a plastic bottle. Yes. I was thinking what you were just saying, Rob. I was going to ask him if he knew whether they were in bed linens, because if they're not, you may just crawl into bed and never get out. You know, when you hear what he's talking about and all of the various products that it could be in. Well, well, you, you can't even waterproof, right? Well, and you can't even, you know, grow your own vegetables and stuff to stay away from the, the containers because the groundwater probably has PFAS in it. Well, now that we've depressed everybody, let's uh, let's move on. I, I pity the next guest. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm never getting tested. <laughs>